Please first, we are talking with the New York Times bestselling author of a book called The Christmas Jars, The Christmas Jars Books, as well as The Wednesday Letters. In fact, my dad read The Christmas Jars, uh, Christmas Jar and passed it on to me and many friends. He now does his own Christmas Jar. He's taken it to heart. And now author Jason Wright has another bestseller called The 17 Second Miracle. Like The Christmas Jars, it also encourages a spirit of giving and gratitude. And we're thrilled to have Jason with us this morning. Good to see morning, you. Jason. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Welcome. Well, so the Christmas jars, you want to start with yeah, that? Yeah, so many people know that one, first right. of all, because that was such a big hit. How did you come up with the story? Because it's not actually a true story, right? Correct. But but hello to your dad, by the way. Very cool. Thank I love you. that he read the book and did more than just put it back on the shelf, but then he decided to actually start a Christmas jar. Very simple concept. You put your loose change in a jar all year long, and then on Christmas Eve, maybe a day or two before, you pick someone to give the jar away to anonymously, and you'd be surprised at how... 50 or 60 or $100 can bless the right family uh, during the Christmas season. And see, my uh, that there's a long history of that happening in my family, mm. going back to my great-grandmother who wow. did it for her children. And But we did it for the kids in the family, the grandkids. You're talking about complete strangers. Yeah, you give it to someone in a, a parking random act lot. Of who, exactly, or someone from church or school or the neighborhood is going through a tough time. I mean, I've heard from people all around the world who've been blessed by a Christmas jar, both giving the jar and how it changes their perspective yeah. on the season and those who've received them. So how did you come up with the 17 second miracle? So kind of a similar idea. The 17 second miracle is based on the concept that donating a few seconds every day instead of a few cents, right, mm -hmm. can really have long lasting impact. A 17 second miracle is something like uh, opening a door for someone as you walk into a building or befriending the new kid at school or loaning a few dollars to someone, giving a hug to somebody who's having a rough day. It's just a few seconds, a small and quick act um, that, as I said, sometimes can last a long, long time in the mind of the receiver. Why 17 seconds? Why not 7 or 37 or 17 minutes? Great question. So it's based on the book, The 17 Second Miracle. At the very beginning of the book, the main character feels responsible for the death of uh, a loved one. And the mother of that loved one tells him that it only took about 17 seconds for this young child to die. Mm -hmm. It's fiction, right? So this is all fiction. We don't want anyone to think this happened in real life. I was so it's glad. Pretty tough. I was so glad to hear that. You were just crying all night. I was just, just torn up. <laughs> it's a really sad story, yeah. and yeah. and and the the mother is just racked with all kinds of feelings, and she takes it out on this this Rex Connor kid. I was so glad to to find out that he's not real. Yeah, and and then Rex, this fictional oh. character, feels so locked up by this thing that he says, you know what? Maybe she's right. Maybe 17 seconds of my own kind of selfishness caused this accident. So he decides to then do nice things for other people that might take 17 seconds. Now, obviously, opening a door doesn't take 17 seconds. And changing a tire takes a lot more than 17 seconds. It's just an easy way to remember how the small acts of mm -hmm. kindness mm -hmm. can help someone. Yeah. And so now you go and speak about this to school children? I do. One of my favorite things to do, to travel around the country. In fact, I'm going to go say hello to a couple of schools today. I hope while I'm in oh, Pittsburgh. Great. Good. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to invite you to do something with me that I often have the kids do with me. Okay. Um, one of the most important 17-second miracles that we can do every day, that viewers can do every day, is to use words with kindness. Use words the way they were meant to be used. I explain to kids around the country that uh, words are a tool, like scissors are a tool, correct? Scissors mm -hmm. have a very well-defined purpose. You can build, you can create, make a nice dress, right? Make a tie. Mm -hmm. In this case, would you take these scissors from me? Sure. What I do with the kids, what I'm going to do with you right now, is ask you to just cut my tie right <laughs> off my neck. See, just, I, it looks like a very just, perfectly nice tie. It's a great tie. Black nice gold, tie. Let me see the nice just, too. just cut it right off. Just You're right. Not, really? Just anywhere you like. Well, <laughs> just go ahead. Come on. Don't All right, be boss. shy. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is happening. That just happened. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do? See what you did. You took a pair of scissors. Yes. That, when used properly, can build and create and do wonderful things. Right? It has a purpose. That pair of scissors. What you did was use it improperly, almost as a weapon. Right? <laughs> well, but, but, and you but, cut my perfectly good tie in half. Now, here's the important it's your thing. your behest. Here's what kids need to know. When they use words as weapons, when they use words the wrong way to hurt people, mm -hmm. to bring people down instead of to lift them up. They can apologize and they can try to make it better. And I could put some duct tape on this if I wanted to, but it's never really going to be the same. No, is it? The damage is done. And when we use words the way they're not meant to be used, that's what we do to one another. And by the way, I think I'm rocking this. I'm going to wear this all the way back to Woodstock, Virginia. <laughs> what do you say? My daughter's over there. What I do you love think? that bad, visual, right? though. Bad. You're right, because you it's can try and mend it, but it's not the same. Like right. words, once they're out there, 
it's in your head, it doesn't completely go away. A 17 second miracle is taking a few seconds to use words to lift people. Like what? So, Give us an example. Like, you know, you look fantastic today. Have I, I told you how great. fantastic you look today? Yep. You, on the other hand, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> You just cut my tie. You know, I, I love you the bum. tie. I love, my dad had a tie just like that, one yeah. of my favorite ties. I love, and you know what? You wear it well. And small things like that really do matter. Yeah. And that's, uh, it does matter. And, and by the same token, the flip side of that coin is that, that harsh words matter too. And, and there's never a better example than this book then when she says, when we're going back to the Rex Connor incident at the lake where the mother says, you killed my angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he remembers those words for the rest of his yes. life. Just burned into his, into his brain. Yeah. What, what do you hear from uh, people who read your book? I know Lori Walker Geiger, one of our good friends and, and KDK employee is uh, a big fan of yours. She read the book. She's the one who told us about yeah. you. She's awesome. I'm so grateful that she was able to connect us this morning. What I hear from people is that they just, they appreciate a little subtle reminder in the form of a book, which is fiction, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't get too locked up in the details because it's just something that came out of my head. But they appreciate the reminder that stopping and looking over your shoulder when you walk in that building to see if there's someone behind you, letting that person who just has a couple of items in Walmart in front of you in line when you've got $800 worth of Slim Jims and Red Bull or whatever yeah, you've got. Right. Those little things add up over time. And if you look at the course of your life and all those small things that you do for people, those few seconds that you donate each and every day, what is that up to? Weeks? months, years of your life. And as I told you before we came on air, this is based largely on the life of my dad. So it's fiction, but it's inspired by my dad, who is very much like Rex Connor. He was someone who knew how to bless another life by donating just a few seconds. And he would do it uh, without even thinking about it and without having any idea that Absolutely. you were gonna write a book about it. Someday. Absolutely, and he's passed away, and I hope he's pleased with his legacy that we're trying to carry on. Well, you mentioned is. the word grateful, and I think for the giver, there's so much of an impact in addition to the person who's receiving the gift. It whether changes it the, the way you view the world, right? It really does, yeah. yeah. Well, does. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much, Jason. Again, folks, the book called The 17-Second Miracle by best-selling author Jason Wright. Also the author, as we mentioned, of the Christmas books and other books. And you can find out about all of them and read Jason's columns and his blog or invite him to speak to your group or your child's school on his website. We've posted that link for you, of course, at kdka.com slash ptl.